Freedom cannot be bestowed. It must be achieved, and the greatest revolutions in history were by those determined to be free. It is astonishing to see the extent to which people can be creative and go beyond the limits of human abilities to sneak themselves from behind bars. In this episode, we narrate the unimaginable strategies used by these legends of liberation to plot their own escapes in some of the most famous prison breaks in history. Number 10. Joaquin Guzman Joaquin Guzman, popularly referred to as El Chapo, is a Mexican drug lord and leader of the Sinaloa drug cartel. He is believed to be the most powerful drug lord alive. He was first arrested in June of 1993 and sentenced to 20 years in prison by Mexican authorities for drug trafficking, possession of firearms, and the murder of Cardinal Posadas Ocampo. While in the Almaloya prison, Guzman was living large with his own quarters, surrounded by his personal bodyguards and mistresses, and running his drug operations without restraints, all thanks to his generous bribes to the prison guards. However, when news reached Guzman that he would be extradited to the US, Javier Camberos, the prison maintenance man, loaded Guzman in a laundry cart covered with dirty clothes, while Francisco Camberos Rivera, a prison guard, opened the electronic doors. Guzman was rolled through the prison yard to a truck that was waiting outside the prison gate. Guzman was again arrested in February 2014. He was transferred to a maximum security prison and placed in solitary confinement. On July 11, 2015, Guzman suddenly disappeared from his cell. His men had dug a 0.9-mile tunnel from a house in the Santa Juanita neighborhood, leading straight to the shower area in Guzman's cell. The police found a motorcycle at the end of the tunnel, believed to be used by Guzman during the escape. On January 8, 2016, Guzman was arrested for the third time. He was extradited to the U.S. and is presently being held at a maximum security detention center in Fremont County, Colorado. Number 9. John Dillinger John Dillinger was an extremely notorious American bank robber and leader of the infamous Dillinger gang. He was a mentor to most of the biggest names in American bank robbery in the 1930s, including Babyface Nelson, Pretty Boy Floyd, John Hamilton, Homer Van Meter, Charles Mackley, Eddie Green, and many more who were all part of the Dillinger gang. After robbing the new Carlisle National Bank in June 1933, Dillinger was arrested and transferred to Allen County Jail. On October 12, 1933, three gang members, Harry Pierpont, John Hamilton, and Hover Van Meter, impersonated Indiana State Police officers and landed in Allen County Jail, claiming they had come to extradite Dillinger to Indiana. When the sheriff, Jess Sarber, asked for their credentials, Pierpoint shot Sarber dead and released Dillinger from his cell. The gang executed dozens of bank robberies, accumulating over $300,000, equaling over $6 million in today's money. On January 25, 1934, Dillinger was arrested in Tucson, Arizona, and taken to the Lake County Jail in Crown Point, Indiana. The sheriff had boasted that the jail was escape-proof and even posted extra guards in the surrounding neighborhood. On March 3, 1934, Dillinger forced his way out past several prison guards using a fake gun carved from a piece of wood and painted with shoe polish and escaped using the sheriff's car. On July 22, 1934, Dillinger was killed by FBI agents outside the Biograph Theater in Chicago after a friend, Anna Ivanova, informed on him to the Bureau. Number 8. Frank Abagnale Abagnale is an American fraudster who began conning people with bad checks at the age of 15. In his teens, through trial and experimentations, he developed different ways of defrauding banks. He would impersonate a pilot to look more legit when cashing the checks. He obtained a uniform by calling the Pan American Airways, claiming to be a pilot for the company and that his uniform had been damaged by the hotel laundryman. He stayed in the hotel with a fake employee ID and had all expenses billed to the airline. He defrauded several banks in the US and Europe. Abagnale was arrested in Montpellier, France in 1969 after an Air France flight attendant recognized him and called the police. Twelve different countries in which he had committed fraud sought his extradition. Abagnale was deported to the US and held at the Federal Detention Center in Atlanta to await trial. While in prison, Frank told a prison guard, supposedly in confidence, that he's an undercover FBI agent, presenting the business card of Joseph C the FBI agent in charge of his case as his own. Coincidentally, 
the Federal Bureau of Prisons in Atlanta had recently lost two of its employees due to negative reports from undercover FBI agents. The prison guard quickly shared the secret with other prison guards. The whole prison administration eventually believed him to be an undercover prison inspector from the FBI. As a result, he was given preferential treatment. Even other inmates were baffled by the extent to which prison guards treated Abagnale with extra caution and respect. Some days later, Abagnale told one of the prison guards that he needed to contact FBI agent Sean O'Reilly on a matter of urgent business, giving them a forged O'Reilly business card with an altered phone number. When the prison guard dialed the number, the call was picked up by Abagnale's girlfriend, Jean Sebring, at a payphone in an Atlanta shopping mall, posing as an operator in the FBI office. Abagnale was then allowed to meet with the FBI agent in a car outside the detention center. Sebring picked up Abagnale and drove him off to a bus station, where he boarded a bus to New York. In 1974, Abagnale was eventually arrested in New York by two police detectives and was sentenced to 12 years in prison. However, he was granted an early release after he agreed to work in the FBI Fraud Investigation Department without pay for the rest of his sentence. Number 7. Choi Gap Bok Yoga is known to have many benefits, such as increasing muscle strength and body flexibility. Apparently, it has another unexpected benefit that is unknown even to yoga studios. Choi Gap Bok is a 50-year-old yoga trainer who has been practicing yoga for over 23 years. On September 12, 2012, Bok was arrested for robbery and detained in a police station in Daegu, South Korea. On September 17, just five days in detention, he applied a skin ointment on the upper part of his body and squeezed himself out of his cell through a tiny food slot at the bottom of his cell. The slot is just 5.9 inches tall, 17.7 inches wide, and the whole escape operation took only 34 seconds. He then tiptoed past three prison guards who were sleeping and slipped out through a narrow window. Before making his escape, he covered pillows with blankets to make the guards think he was still in bed, and so it took a while for his absence to be noticed. Out of the detention center, he stole a car, but noticed so many police checkpoints ahead. He then ditched the car and continued on foot. He eventually made his way to a village called Miryang, from where he boarded a bus to another city. After six days on the run, Bach was arrested on the roof of an apartment building, hiding in a cardboard box. Number 6. The Alcatraz Escape the Alcatraz prison was a maximum security prison located on the island of Alcatraz, off the coast of San Francisco. Surrounded by water, the prison was believed to be escape-proof. However, all that changed on the night of June 11, 1962, when three prisoners, Frank Lee Morris, John Anglin, and brother Clarence Anglin, made their escape through a hole in their prison cell. The men had spent several months slowly widening a ventilation hole on their cell wall, using spoons and other homemade tools. Out of the prison walls, they used life rafts made from over 50 prison-issued raincoats to get across to the bay. To buy time, they left lifelike dummy heads in their beds, and so their absence was not noticed until the next day at dawn. The men were never heard from again, and it was highly speculated that they all drowned in the water. However, in 2016, a photo was revealed that showed the Anglin brothers, John and Clarence, in Brazil allegedly taken in 1975, 13 years after their escape. Number 5. The Great Taliban Escape At 4 o'clock a.m. on Monday, April 25, 2011, the guards at the Kandahar prison in Afghanistan realized that the entire political wing of the prison, which hosted captured Taliban insurgents, was suddenly empty. 476 inmates had escaped through a 1,050 feet long tunnel, dug from a house on the opposite side of the Kandahar Kabul Highway, leading straight into a cell belonging to a Taliban prisoner in the political section of the prison. Only three inmates were aware of the plot and were in contact with the tunnel diggers. The three inmates had managed to lay hands on the master key. When the time came, they opened the cells of the other inmates, starting around 11 o'clock p.m., sneaking prisoners through the tunnel in groups of five. By sunrise, 476 inmates, almost one-third of the prison capacity, had vanished. When the alarm was sounded, nearby NATO and U.S. forces joined in the search, but the escapees had already been moved to secure destinations by a fleet of cars that the Taliban had organized in waiting.
Number 4. Ronaldo Silva In April 2012, Ronaldo Silva, a drug trafficker who was awaiting trial at the Pinedo Jail in Brazil, escaped from prison immediately after his wife paid him a visit. Silva had asked his wife to come along with a dress, a wig, red lipstick, nail polish, a bra, and high heel shoes. Shortly after his wife left, Silva, in a dashing disguise, joined a group of women who came visiting, slowly walked past the prison guards, and made his way out of the prison gates right to a nearby bus station, where two men were waiting on motorbikes to pick him up. Unfortunately for him, there is more to being a woman than wearing a dress and a wig. At the bus station, a policeman became curious when he noticed a woman struggling to carry herself in heels. When the officer approached, he realized it wasn't a woman after all. It was Silva. Silva was unmasked, arrested, and taken back to detention. Number 3. Pascal Payet – Helicopter Escape Pascal Payet is a notorious French armed robber who was sentenced to 30 years in prison after trying to hijack a cash transport car of the French Central Bank on November 20, 1997, during which a guard was murdered. Because Payet had a remarkable track record of prison breaks, he was officially classified as a prisoner under high surveillance. He was placed in solitary confinement and was never allowed to spend more than six months in the same prison. Despite all these measures, on July 14, 2007, Taking advantage of the National Day celebrations, Payet had his men hijack a helicopter from the Cana Mendelu airport and landed on the roof of the Grasse prison, where Payet was being detained at the time. The men lowered ropes, picked up Payet, and flew 38 kilometers northeast of Toulon in the Mediterranean coast, from where they fled to Spain. Payet was captured some months later in the suburbs of Barcelona and extradited to France. Number 2. Willie Sutton, The Slick Willie Sutton, popularly referred to as Willie the Slick, was an American bank robber renowned for effortlessly executing non-violent bank robberies. On February 15, 1933, Sutton robbed the Corn Exchange Bank and Trust Company in Philadelphia by disguising himself as a postman. He robbed the same bank the second time on January 15, 1934, by sneaking through a skylight. He also robbed other banks and jewelry stores by disguising himself either as a police officer or a maintenance man, and usually arrived at the premises shortly before they opened for business. In February of 1934, Sutton was arrested and sentenced to 25 years in prison. While at the Philadelphia County Prison, Sutton and 12 other inmates dressed as prison guards and carried two ladders across the prison yard to a wall. When the prison searchlights hit them, Sutton yelled, It's all right, and so no one stopped them. They slowly made their way out of the prison while the real prison guards watched. Sutton was finally arrested in February 1952 after being recognized on a subway by Arnold Schuster, a 24-year-old clothing salesman from Brooklyn. Number 1. The Texas Seven The Texas Seven were a group of convicted felons who escaped from a maximum security detention center near Kennedy, Texas on December 13, 2000. The seven men, Joseph Garcia, Randy Halpern, Larry Harper, Patrick Murphy, Donald Newbury, George Rivas, and Michael Rodriguez were serving 30 years to life for aggravated assault, armed robbery, and murder charges. The operation started at around 11.20 a.m. during lunch, when surveillance is usually focused on the dining area of the prison. The seven convicts overpowered nine civilian maintenance workers through a carefully planned ploy. One of the offenders would impersonate a prison guard and call a maintenance worker over, and another would hit the unsuspecting victim on the head from behind. Once the victim was knocked unconscious, the offender would pull him into an electrical room and swap their clothes with those of the victims. Three of the offenders then made their way to the prison back gate and pretended to be installing monitors and subdued the guard at the gate, while the other four stayed behind and made calls to the prison tower guards to distract them. The four then stole a prison maintenance truck, which they drove to the back gate of the prison, picked up their cohorts, and drove out of prison to freedom. By January 2001, six of the escapees had been apprehended after their images were aired on the television program America's Most Wanted. The final man, Larry Harper, committed suicide on January 22, 2001, before he could be arrested. Thank you for watching. If you have a video idea, why not leave a comment below? And if we make it, we'll give you a big shout out. 
And please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more awesome videos on crime history and historical scandals.